All right, this video tutorial is going to be just a, a basic introduction to plan grid. Uh, for those of you that may not be familiar with, or maybe you're at a branch that isn't currently using plan grid, uh, I guess the first question is what is plan grid? And plan grid is a electronic uh, solution for doing a number of things. It, it, pretty much for managing an entire project from viewing sheets to quickly navigating uh, the details uh, through hyperlink drawings to uh, doing your field reports and you know, filling out reports you can now do that through plan grid you can upload customized uh, field reports to plan grid you can track any number of things you know all of your submittals uh, all the project documents that 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 used to you know be kept in a foreman's binder can now be all uploaded to plan grid to where uh your foreman in the field or, or whoever your project team may be they've quickly got everything they used to have and they've got it all contained within a single device uh an ipad or, or any smart tablet uh that you know that they may have on site so just to go through a quick introduction, we're going to go to plan grid and uh, mainly, you know, the, the end user, the foreman in the field or the project manager, uh, the idea is that most, uh, most of the viewing will actually be on an iPad. But, you know, for project managers, everything is pretty much managed uh, through a computer by going to plangrid.com. And logging in with the credentials that uh, that IT furnishes to you, and when you do that, you're going to come to uh, you know your home screen. Your home screen will consist of all the projects that you've previously uploaded. Uh, right here, pretty much the only option here is to either select a project currently uploaded or to select new project and. Uh, upload a new drawing but just to, to you know the, the purpose of this video is just to go uh, to an overview of uh, of what plan grid is and what it's all about uh, right here this is the Paulding County Adult Detention and Law Enforcement Center a project that we currently have going out of the Atlanta branch and uh, as you can see there's 559 sheets uh, there's 298 separate documents that I've uploaded uh, in addition to those 559 sheets, and our team consists of uh, seven individuals. So over here on the left-hand side, you can see that, you know, this sheets right here, this is the same thing as clicking this button, but you've got your sheets, you've got tasks, RFIs, field reports, documents, photos, team, and settings. So if you, uh, if we just navigate to our sheets right here, it'll bring up a full list of all of the drawings that we've uh, uploaded to date. And what you're looking at right here is a list of the most up-to-date drawings. There's been numerous revisions or version sets as Plan Grid refers to it. And, uh, you know, with each new version set that comes out, Plan Grid will actually, well, will automatically upload you know, recognize the date of the revision and make sure that your guys in the field are viewing the latest and greatest drawings uh, at any point in time. So you can, you know, I use this when I go to price revisions as a project manager. Uh, that way I can quickly uh, view the old version of the drawing, you know, overlay the new version of the drawing and quickly see the differences. Uh, but one of, one of the key things, uh, when I first started using Plan Grid, it was uh, simply, you know, a document viewing tool. And as you can see, when we click on any of these drawings here, uh, this is similar to what your foreman will see out in the field. And, uh, you know, all of these sheets have uh, different details that are referenced. And one of the, the cool things that, that Plan Grid offers is it performs... Uh, Optical character recognition. It's a big word for, you know, it scans every sheet and it automatically recognizes the details that are called out. And 
when you got your iPad in your hand, you would just simply zoom in and tap that detail right there, and we could quickly navigate from sheet A-105 to A-930 without having to flip through 400 other sheets in a rolled up set of drawings. So hyperlink details is uh, you know one of the highly beneficial functions, uh, especially for much larger projects. Uh, you know that's that's kind of what we focus on here in Atlanta, but but Plan Grid is is a great tool for even the smallest projects. You know by just uploading the drawings, maintaining all of your documents in one central in one central place. You know at the end of the the job, you'll be able to file away in one central place all the details and all of the you know essentially the correspondence and everything from uh, from that project. So uh, let's jump to a different sheet that that may have a little bit more of the functionality uh, displayed. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, there was a number of documents that I've uploaded to, uh, to this project, and it's, it's really up to the, uh, the end user, the project manager, the you know, team leader, as to what type of documents you want to upload and, and how you want to manage it but you can quickly you know upload rfis you can hyperlink these documents to different places on the floor plan on the reflected ceiling plans on any you know any documents you want to so that at any point in time when your foreman's out there in the field and say they're doing layout uh, they can quickly navigate to these uh, contract documents that have had an effect on our scope of work uh, so that's just the documents, you know, to see a full list of documents for this particular project. Uh, I've got different folders for all of these documents. This is essentially my foreman's binder that consists of our contract that gives a, you know, the, the description of the scope of work for the foreman. I, you know, I don't upload the, in, the entire, you know, I don't want to bombard them with a ton of boilerplate information they don't need. I do my best to only upload the documents that's pertinent to uh, uh, the foreman in the field being successful. Uh, coordination documents is something that I refer to as other trades, you know, other trade shop drawings. When we're having to frame walls, a specific dimension based on a cut sheet offered up by another sub, uh, this is the folder I would upload all those documents into and then I hyperlink them from the drawings. Uh, so that, you know, if there's a window on a floor plan, my foreman can quickly tap on that document. It'll pull up the cut sheet from, you know, say the uh, aluminum storefront subs, you know, shop drawings. Uh, you, there's, you, you can, you know, from my estimate takeoff, I took and printed from on screen all of our, uh, all of our estimates and, and broke everything down into a, a format that allows my foreman at any point in time to pull up the estimate to, you know, check and see is it is it our scope of work, is it not ours, you know, just to allow them the ability to, to quickly navigate our scope of work and to understand it through the actual takeoff that uh, that we started with in, in on screen and quick bid. Uh, layout, uh, we got some specific layout files here that uh, give the rough openings for some framed openings and uh, it's just other pertinent information. There's any number of documents, you know, from the schedule, you know, the site-specific safety plan, RFIs that have been generated. You know, I, I'm constantly uploading RFIs and hyperlinking them to the drawings for the guys in the field to review. Uh, the specifications, I normally go through and, and highlight, you know, the specifications before I upload them so that, you know, anything that's not standard, not customary, the, the, the team in the field, you know, they have at their fingertips. Uh, so with the documents functionality, there's any number of documents that you can upload and, uh, you know, have, have right there for your foreman at, uh, no matter where they are. As long as they got their iPad with them, they have access to, to all these documents. Uh, the field reports is something that's kind of a newer functionality we've been using here in the Atlanta branch. And I actually have custom reports, uh, acoustic reports that, uh, we've uploaded for, you know, the guys in the field. And, uh, you know, so all of our daily reports, uh, T&M tickets, 
uh, pre-task planning, which is, uh, this is a Turner construction job. They're huge on safety. So we've had to upload pre-task plannings for pretty much every process that we have. Uh, all of these forms are maintained and saved through plan grid. So at the end of the job, when I do my export, um, the job ending export, every daily report, every T&M ticket, every ladder or scaffold permit that we've created on this job will be saved into one central place. And the beauty of it too is that it's said saved in one specific format. Every job is saved the same way. So that's the field reports. You can create custom PDF reports and, and upload them. And just to show you an example of what we use for our daily report, if I click on new report right here, then right here it is. I can come through here. I can edit all of these fields and you know, fill out, fill out, essentially fill out all the reports. Your foreman in the field can obviously do the same thing. Uh, completing the forms is something you can do through the PC as well as on the iPad. Um, that's documents. RFIs is a functionality that we really don't use. When we're general contractors using plan grid, then the RFI is something that we would utilize because it's something that's assigned to different trades. So, uh, on this particular job, the general contractor is not using plan grid, so we don't utilize this RFI functionality. Whenever we have to submit RFIs, we actually utilize our RFI form um, and our field reports. The tasks is another item that, you know, it's just a little circle with two letters on it that you can drop on any floor plan, any reflected ceiling plan, you can assign uh, QC as quality control, or maybe it's a scheduling issue, SI. Uh, you can create and name your own tasks however you want to, to, uh, you know, to create a task to be tracked and, and uh, you know, action items for whoever. We'll just uh, find a floor plan here that has a task so I can give you an example here. Down here I can quickly navigate and jump to different sheets. These round circles right here are tasks. Uh, dollar sign is what we use for damage. You know, whenever our work is damaged, we utilize the circle with the dollar signs to track all the places that are damaged. And each one is photographed. And I can quickly generate a report to usually price up work, you know, when all the, you know, when, when the damage needs fixed and we need to furnish the client a proposal to fix all the damage, I can come here, I can filter uh, these tasks into a report that'll show the location, it'll show the sheet that it's on, it'll indicate, you know, the, the photograph that we took in the field to be able to quickly and easily furnish them that proposal but like I say that's just for the damage you can do quality control issues scheduling issues um, there's no limit to the the number of different types of issues that you can utilize to to manage your projects the team is simply you know the foreman who all the all the pertinent players and managers of the team uh, you come here to you know I can add team members from playing grid and uh it gives them access to anything and everything that has happened with that project to date. If we hire a new employee, a new foreman, and bring them out here to the job, I've simply got to come here and add him as a team member to give him instantaneous access to all of these documents, all of these plans, and all of the the transpondence that, that all the correspondence that's happened to date uh, through Plan Grid. So, um, in a nutshell, that's the the basic introduction to Plan Grid. There's a ton of functionality with uh, with this program, and uh, it's it's a very useful tool.